because it was one of the first books I actually studied when I became a Christian with, uh, with other guys during my college years. One of its topics it talks a lot about is, is wisdom and knowledge. We talked a little bit about that yesterday, and so I want to follow up with that by reading the first five verses of chapter 2. And I would invite you to follow along in your Bible as well. It says, My child, if you accept my words and treasure up my commandments within you, making your ear attentive to wisdom, and inclining your ear to understanding. If you indeed cry out for insight and raise your voice for understanding, if you seek it like silver and search for it as for hidden treasures, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. If you notice, there are three different if statements that if you accept these things, if you do these things, and then verse 5 is the payoff, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and the knowledge of God. So there's an if-then kind of setup that the author is working with. And he says, if you accept my words, the words of God, if you accept them as scripture, that is to say yes to them and to affirm them, and if you treasure them up in your the treasure up the commandments, that's that idea of storing up, of, of taking them in and, and immersing yourself in them. Scripture talks about hiding Scripture in your heart. This is that idea of, of storing up the commandments within you. And it says then, making your ear attentive to wisdom. That is this idea of turning your ear to wisdom. Remember we talked about wisdom as being the discernment of God and trying to discern what God is trying to tell you, to teach you, as you accept and store up these commandments that has been, have been given to you. He begins to, continues to build on that, and he says, and inclining your heart to understanding. This idea is turning your heart to apply what you're, what you're receiving, what you're understanding, what you're discerning from Scripture. He's saying, if you accept it, if you seek to try to understand what God's saying and then apply it to your life. He's saying that's the first if. And then he adds another one. He says, if you indeed cry out for insight. This is this idea of calling out, saying, God, I really need your insight. I need you to understand. I need to understand what you're talking about. He builds on that by saying, raise your voice for understanding. That almost is an is a increased level of call to the point of crying out. Saying, God, I need this. I need this. There is an intensity and a passion around that. 
And he says, that's what I'm looking for. I'm calling out, I need this God. He says, if you approach it like that, and then he adds another if clause on top of that. He says, if you seek it like silver, in other words, if you look for it, you know, think of like the gold rush folks, how they're always looking for gold. That's this idea of trying to seek this wisdom and this application of God's word. And he says, search for it as for hidden treasure. That is, leave no stone unturned. I like that idea of thinking about that. That that is really what we're talking about here. Is If you can do those things. So those three if clauses are about taking in God's word, treasuring them up, seeking to understand what God would have for them, through them, for you, and then applying it to your life. If you truly get after it and do those things, the author says, then you will understand. Understand the fear of the Lord and find knowledge of God. Remember, the knowledge was the actual living out the practical day-to-day, -day, taking what you know, taking what you've learned, taking what you've treasured up in your heart, and actually living it out on a daily basis. And in that, you understand the fear of the Lord. This idea that our God is in control. He is to be revered. He is the one who is guiding and shepherding you. And it is only because of him that we have that opportunity to learn his commandments and to discern from him what they are and how we apply them to our lives. I like these, this little group of five verses because it really lays out what our lives are about in Christ. When everything is said and done in the world around us, the only thing that matters is you and your relationship with Christ. Doesn't matter the job, doesn't matter the money you make, doesn't matter what happens in geo-world politics around us, doesn't matter what happens in the election. What matters is your relationship with God. And this is how you develop that relationship. You say yes to his God word. You take it in, you store it up, you immerse yourself in it. And you ask God to help you understand it. For it is only with God's help through his spirit that we can understand it. And then to begin to live it out, to apply it in our lives. When we do that, we will have wisdom. We will have knowledge we will be walking faithfully with our God. That is what I encourage you to do today. What is the next step for you to walk with God? I invite you to consider that today. Because as I said, everything else will fall away at some point in life. The only thing that will remain is your relationship with Christ. I invite you to maximize that right now, even today. Let me pray. Lord God, thank you that you are our God who loves us, who seeks us, and who desires us more than anything else. Lord, we confess that we're not good at returning that. But Lord, I pray that you would Take your word and help us to store it up in our hearts. For we ask for your understanding of it, that we might live it out faithfully. Great words for us, Lord. And I ask that you would lead us to that end, even starting this day. In your name, amen. Well, I invite you, um, it is uh, Tuesday mornings. I invite you to join, join for a Zoom, Zoom prayer fellowship. Prayer is one of those things that is going to be is important for us as a church to undergird everything in prayer. So I invite you to join us for that. Also, just take a look at the rest of the things that are going to be in the, uh, the constant contact the email that we'll send out with this video. 
So I hope you have a good day and uh, stay cool <laughs> and we will talk soon. Bye-bye now.